Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get back to Revelation. And, um, and so, you know, a lot of people have difficulty being interested in the study of the book of Revelation. And the number one reason they cite for not being interested in studying Revelation is um, it's, it's not relative to our lives now. It's not what's happening in our life right now. <laughs> and my answer to that is, <laughs> folks, you better wake up. It is relative because you're there. You're there. You know, we're, we're looking at a preview, a future event, events, that I don't think is in the too distant future. I think, uh, you know, God doesn't let us know. Um, and it's probably because if he let us know the exact date of the rapture, <clears throat> the uh, great tribulation, we, we would probably be uh, hunkered down somewhere and uh, paralyzed by just knowing when all of this is going to happen. So God spares us that, and I'm thankful that he does, so that instead of being focused upon uh, the dates, we can be focused upon the Great Commission. And that is what uh, our mandate is. It's, uh, that, that is our mission, is the Great Commission, to go and preach the gospel to every creature, get the gospel out there, so that those who, who uh, will be saved, uh, are going to be saved, can be saved, because uh, they have information, they have access to the gospel. And so I'm really glad that God doesn't allow us to know the date of the rapture. Of course, uh, you know, once we're raptured, um, we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air, then, then we do know. It's seven years from then, uh, the great tribulation, and then at the conclusion of the Great Tribulation begins the millennial reign of Christ for 1,000 years upon the earth. And at the conclusion of the millennial reign of Christ, there is, there is yet another final battle between God and Satan. And following that battle, uh, we enter into what's called the eternal state, which is really um, entering back into what life was before the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. And, um, and so, um, you know, we're there, folks. I mean, here we are, this side of all of these events. But please remember, as we study this, you're there. You're there in heaven at the point all of this is transpiring. So now um, let's, let's go ahead and do this in uh, chapter 7, verse 16 and 17. Then we're going to go in right on into chapter 8. They, referring to the tribulation martyrs, those who have been saved, those who have been witnessing, those who have been preaching the gospel, and the 144,000 Jewish witnesses, believers during the tribulation, <clears throat> and their ministry has been so impactful that we we read that there was an innumerable number of souls 
during the tribulation, won to Christ, brought to Christ, because as a result of their witness, and uh, they, they do suffer martyrdom, they, they are murdered at the hands of Antichrist and his cohorts during the, uh, the great tribulation. And uh, so verse 16, <clears throat> and we'll read verse 17, they shall hunger no more. They, referring to the tribulation saints, so clearly they are suffering uh, for their belief, their faith, their witness. Uh, they, uh, there's, there's hunger, <clears throat> there's thirst, neither thirst anymore. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Now, what is God telling us and what should we understand about their predicament, these believers during the great tribulation, these who have come to Christ, trusting, believing in him, which remember is um, the consequence of the great tribulation is they're, they're uh, brought to they're brought to a place and to a point in their lives where uh, the only remedy, their only hope, uh, is is God, is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they come to belief and faith in Christ. So I want you to think about verse number sixteen. They, the tribulation martyrs. Uh, shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. So that is descriptive of people that have become what, class? If we were to read this in a modern day headline today about people that are hungering, that are thirsting, that are being uh, injured by the sun, by the, the sunlight or the heat from the sun, what would we conclude about that segment of our society today? We, we, there you go. There you go. So what God is letting us know about those who come to Jesus during the Great Tribulation is, they're, they're going to suffer loss. They're, they're going to be put out. They're, they're going to um, be exposed. They're, they're going to be deprived. They're, they're going to be exposed to the elements. Uh, and, you know, remember, God is really ramping it up. We've already looked at the seal judgments. We've seen one fourth of the world's population in Revelation chapter six as a consequence of wars and and famines and and disease and and uh, animal attacks. Uh, uh, you know, the um, the world is going into in, into uh, utter and complete chaos and 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 it's catastrophic and it's global and. And uh, so these who uh, are preaching the gospel, these who are re believing the gospel, accepting Jesus Christ, are in a world of hurt during the Great Tribulation at the hand of Antichrist. And uh, now look at, if you would, in verse 17, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne, now in my Bible, Lamb L is capitalized. Is that the way it is in your Bible? Referring to whom? Jesus, the Lamb of God, Jesus. Okay. For the Lamb, uh, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them 
and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall do what class? So this is another this is this is another picture of of um, you know the emotional effect the, of all of this suffering on earth for having accepted Jesus Christ it's it's a life of tears it's you know, um, it's, um, and uh, so, but, but understand, and, and, who, and who's going to wipe away all tears from their eyes? Who's, who's going to do the wiping? Look at that. God. God shall wipe away. So, where does that tell us the as we think about um, where these tribulation saints are now situated are now located are they still on earth or where are they now I mean God is wiping away their tears therefore they must be with whom they're with God and where is God he's in heaven um Go to Revelation chapter 21. Because Revelation does that. And it's not it's not what we would call in chronological order, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, you know. Um, but it can all be it can all be knit together. And tied together, uh, but notice in uh, it, okay be, because remember now, listen. They're in heaven, and how is that? Do you understand tribulation martyr? What happens when they? What happens when they're murdered by Antichrist and his and his cohorts? Paul said to be absent from the body is to be what? Is to be present with the Lord. Okay, so um, so now we look at we look at Revelation chapter twenty one, and uh, so we want to we want to look at a few verses here, beginning with verse number four. <clears throat> now you know, and and we can connect the dots. <clears throat> We just read in in uh, we just read in chapter seven and verse seventeen, and God shall wipe away all tears, uh, you know, from their eyes. <clears throat> now we read in Revelation twenty one in verse number four. What do we read in verse four of chapter twenty one? Ah, oh, look at that. So it's, it's one and the same event. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. These people were being martyred. These, these uh, who came to Christ during the Great Tribulation as a result of 144,000 Jewish preachers evangelists or missionaries 12,000 from each of each of uh, the 12 tribes who themselves came to faith in Christ uh, and and remember that's that is what is so compelling about the great tribulation is it's uh, it's getting people off the fence you go into the great tribulation you're not going to be able to you're not a fence sitter you're either in Antichrist camp or you're going to be in God's camp. It's one or the other, you, you know. And uh, these people made their 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 choice, their decision, and uh, and they paid a price. They they were murdered, you know. And I think we read last week uh, one of the 
One of the principal ways for martyrdom during the Great Tribulation is by beheading. And isn't it interesting that that is, that is such a that is such a method employed still to this day in that region of the world. I mean, anyway, uh, so, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Now, that's descriptive of their life after accepting Christ with, you know, now the Antichrist persecuting them until they are murdered and they get to go and be with their Heavenly Father. I mean, this is a description of their life. This was life. And I've heard a lot of Christians uh, uh, say how glad they are that they got saved during the church age so that they don't have to go through this during the Great Tribulation, you know, or that, that uh, because the Bible is very clear. Uh, for those who are alive and who are saved during the Great Tribulation, uh, here, here's a description of life. There it is. Yeah. Sorrow, crying, death, um, tears, pain, for the former things are passed away because now they're in heaven. You know, and uh, he that sat upon the throne said, I make all things new. And, you know, heaven is to be looked forward to. We're to be looking forward to heaven. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not to say that there's no, it, look, it's not to say that there is no heartbreak, it's, there's no pain, there, there's no sorrow, there's no crying, there's no suffering right now during the church age, because there is. But during the Great Tribulation, what happens now in the life of the child of God now during the church age is going to seem like a cakewalk during the Great Tribulation. There is no comparison and uh, you know he says uh, in uh, verse uh, 5 he says I make all things new and he said unto me write for these words are true and faithful thank God we have the truth and I'm so glad I come to church open my Bible and I'm studying reading the truth I want the truth, you know. I, uh, right for these words are true and faithful because they came from God. Thy word is truth, John 17, 17. Uh, the word of God is truth and, uh, and faithful. Faithful meaning that what God says, what God promises, he will do. Now notice in verse number six, and he said unto me, it is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So, you know, God is saying your life has, your, your life um, it, it is not without rhyme or reason. God has promised in, in uh, Philippians, which I, I just don't have time to write it down, Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, that what he has begun in you, he will perform until the day of his appearing. So uh, really that's important to understand that your, your, your life is not an accident, that, that God is in control, he's doing a work, he's working a work in uh, the life of every child of his. Um, and what, you know, Alpha and Omega, what he starts, he will finish. What he begins, he, he will end. <laughs> and uh, so there is a rhyme, there is a reason, there is a purpose, there is a plan uh, it, it, for the child of God. And uh, he says, I will give unto him that is a thirst 
of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, now we know, we, we know from uh, God's word, there's only one way to overcome. And I'll give you the reference again. I, I just don't have time to go to all these. First John 5, verse 4 and 5, God very definitely tells us how to overcome. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Does anyone know how we overcome? We overcome by, by what? By faith. We overcome by faith. And, and uh, 1 John 5, 4 and 5, that's how you overcome, by trusting, believing. No matter what, no matter what is happening, no matter what has happened, no matter what is going to happen, keep the faith. Paul says, I have kept the faith. Raise the shield of faith above all else. Raise the shield of faith. Keep the faith. And that's how you overcome. You may not understand why. You may not understand uh, all the reasons for you know what has happened, what is happening, and what is going to happen. But keep the faith, and you'll overcome. Just keep trusting and believing God. Uh, it you know so so uh, important to just keep the faith. Any wonder why the enemy? attacks with the purpose of destroying our faith. He, he, he just wants us to, uh, he wants us to, um, you know, quit believing, quit trusting, and then, and then he's got you. Uh, but uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son, child, And then verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we, let's go back to, uh, please, Revelation chapter 8. Uh, but God shall wipe away all those tears from their eyes. And, uh, and then in uh, verse number 1 of chapter 8, and, and when he had opened the seventh seal. Now, remember, we're still in the seal judgments. The seal judgments are the outpouring of God's wrath upon the world of um, the God haters, the Christ rejectors, uh, you know, and which <laughs> we're not subject to the outpouring of this wrath during the Great Tribulation because, and, and that is because all of the wrath that should have been poured upon us because we believed in Jesus instead was poured upon him. And so he took all of the wrath at Calvary, his great passion, his death, uh, his, his torture, his, his, uh, you know, his suffering, his his death, uh, because Christ died for our sins, his burial, his resurrection. He took all of that, and that's why we're not here on earth during the great tribulation. We are saved from the wrath of God. And what we're looking at is the wrath of God. Now, <clears throat> and so... Uh, we're, we're going to go into another set of judgments. They're called the trumpet judgments. <clears throat> but the trumpet judgments are 
packed into the seal judgments. In fact, one of the seal judgments leads into the trumpet judgments. <clears throat> and uh, so when he had opened the seventh seal, <clears throat> there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. God, you know, not literally, but, you know, I'm just going to illustrate this way. God hits the pause button for about, Bible says about the space of half an hour. Who, who can speculate? What is he waiting for? He pauses, he pauses uh, the outpouring of his wrath upon the world for about a half an hour. Can anyone venture a guess for what is God waiting for? Why does he hit the pause button? And that's, and that's, uh, and that's a good answer, Brother Cecil. He, he's waiting to see if anyone else will come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ at this juncture of the outpouring of his wrath. And so he waits about a half an hour. And, and he's, he's looking, he's, he's listening. Um, now, let's, let's, let's press on, please, in verse number two. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. So, and to them were given seven trumpets. So we see angels involved in meeting out the wrath of God upon the, the world. And another angel came, verse three now, and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense. A, a censer is a container. Incense, um, the purpose of it, have any of you ever used incense? Do you understand incense? Well, I think today they use a lot of candles. But what, what are you, what are you, so when you, Am I saying this right? When you light an incense, is that the right way to say it? When you light an incense, well, or you light a candle, what are you hoping to accomplish in the space, the area where you have, where you've done that? Okay, okay, uh, a scent. To what? To what purpose, though? So, so you're going to, you're going to put a scent in a living space, an area, okay? But but to what purpose? To say what, Mary? Okay. All right. All right. Any 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 uh, to what? Okay, um, and uh, so let's let's just look at this. Um, and another angel came and stood at the altar. I'm in verse three of chapter eight of Revelation, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the what? Wow, would you look at this? You know, you can read about this in, which I don't have time, but I'll give you the reference, Luke chapter 1. Because in Luke chapter 1, uh, the father of John the Baptist, his work in the temple. Now remember, um, you know, we're... Um, we're going to, um, we're looking at right now, 
activity that is occurring in the, in the temple of heaven, which is where God is. And, um, okay, so um, Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, his work was to go to the temple, light incense, and, and uh, the, the smoke of the incense would rise toward heaven and it, it was for the same reason. It was, it was to fragrance the prayers of God's people. Uh, but now we're in heaven. This is a look, this is, this is a heavenly scene happening. You're, you're getting to read about it before the fact in advance of it, but, and, and this is the way it's gonna be. You, you know, oh yeah, yeah, we, we looked at this in our Bible class and lo and behold, as, as we're now caught up and we're with the Lord in heaven and, and um, incense makes it, it perfumes, it makes it desirable, it makes it acceptable to God, okay? And, and, I, and I want you to see something, and we can do this in, in Romans chapter 8. Now, you want to keep your place here, please, but I want you to look at something. Uh, I want you to look at something that God does to make our prayers acceptable to him, if you will, to fragrance them, to incense them, but it's... It's what God does, you know, with regard to the prayer life during the church age of his children. Because, you know, hopefully we talk to God, you know, and hopefully we do a lot of things, a lot of thanksgiving. And we ought to be. I mean, hopefully our prayers are filled with praise and thanksgiving to God. We're letting him know how grateful we are to him for every blessing that he bestows upon our lives. And we know it's all because of Jesus and we ought to just be a nonstop praise and thanksgiving to uh, our heavenly father uh, because, uh, because of Jesus, all of these blessings uh, are upon our lives. <clears throat> and... Um, as well as asking God to meet, you know, to meet certain specific needs of it. Now look at this. I'm not, I want you to see the way God fragrances or makes the prayer acceptable um, during this time that we are now living. So Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 now look at this. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our, <clears throat> our infirmities, you know, our deficiencies, any shortcomings uh, uh, as it concerns our prayer life. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now that's God telling us, inspiring the Apostle Paul to say to us, you, you don't know uh, what we should pray for as we ought, how to, how to present that prayer to God in, in just exactly uh, a way that he wants it to be presented unto him. <laughs> but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for who? Now that's, that's God incensing the prayer. Are you seeing that? So, you know, I can go to God in prayer through Jesus Christ, my Savior. That's the only way I can go to the Heavenly Father is through Jesus. And I can, I can uh, pray 
But what God does to make that prayer what he wants it to be is the Holy Spirit gets a hold of my prayer and by the time it reaches the Heavenly Father, it is absolutely what he wants it to be. It has been incensed or it has been perfumed. In other words, it is just totally pleasing to the Father, totally acceptable to the Father, and it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit. So we get to the Father by prayer through Jesus, but when the prayer arrives to the Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit has made it acceptable to the Heavenly Father. It, I guess I would say it is the perfect prayer. Not because of anything we've done. It, it, it's so important to pray. You say, well, why pray? Well, why then should I even pray? Well, if, if you're not praying, you're not giving the Holy Spirit anything to work with. It, you better be praying because the Bible says pray without ceasing. You better be praying. You better be praying about all things, about everything. Now look at this. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, capital S, right? Capital S, that is God the Holy Spirit, third person of the Godhead. <clears throat> so we see one of the works of the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You say, well, what is, he, what is the Holy Spirit saying to the Father? I don't know. They cannot be uttered. I don't know. Uh, now watch. And uh, he that searcheth the hearts, and who is it that looks on the heart? Searches it's, it's God. God searcheth the heart. Knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession, he, the Holy Spirit, maketh intercession for the who class? For the, for the child of God, the saints, the believers. But now watch this important detail. We must not leave this off. According to what? The will of God. By the time the Holy Spirit fragrances that prayer and makes that prayer acceptable to God the Father, that prayer is a prayer within the scope of God's will. And when that prayer is within the scope of God's will, that's a prayer that God will react to, respond to, and uh, will address that request, whatever it is. Um, let's go back to Revelation, please. <clears throat> and so, um, And uh, Revelation chapter 8. And uh, verse 3 and about midway, there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. Now you say, well, is this talking about the church saints? Well, where are the church saints at the time of this scene? They're in heaven. No? No. Uh, offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden, the golden what? And where is that altar situated? in the temple. It's in the heavenly temple. Remember, we're in heaven. Yeah. Uh, which was before the, before whose throne, class? Whose throne? Who's on that throne? God is on that throne. God's throne. Um, now, <clears throat> now watch this. 
and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So we see the work of angels as it concerns the prayer of the saints. The angel delivers those prayers. You remember Daniel praying for, <clears throat> was it 21 days, but, it, but his prayer could not get through to God? And who did God dispatch from heaven to come and take possession of Daniel's prayer to break through the prince of Persia, a, a demonic spirit that was hindering Daniel's prayer. Uh, it was uh, the archangel. God dispatched the archangel and uh, finally defeated that spirit being and the prayer made it. Daniel's prayer made it, but uh, delivered by an angel. And so we see the work of angels, and, and angels are very much a part of uh, the prayer life of the child of God during the church age. Now, um, so uh, I'm in verse 4 of Revelation chapter 8, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now let's, let's go back to chapter 6, verse 9. So let's do that. Because, remember, class, uh, this particular seal judgment is introducing the seven trumpet judgments of God. So everything's connected here. Everything is, is beautifully harmonious. So in Revelation chapter 6, so we're talking, you know, whose prayers, whose prayers uh, is God the Father uh, receiving by the agency of these angels? All right, look at this. Revelation 6 verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. Now remember, we just read the altar, which is near whose throne? God's throne. Uh, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were what class? That were slain for the word of God. Now this is not, uh, this is, uh, we're, we're in great tribulation here. And why were they slain, murdered, martyred? For the testimony which they, for their belief in Jesus Christ, they're murdered. Now verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, this is their prayer. And what is the prayer of these tribulation martyrs? Well, let's read it. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our what, class? Uh, our murders. The life is where? Where is the life? The life is in the blood. You can read that in Leviticus chapter 17. So when they, what they're asking God, these are... These are um, martyrs who are now in heaven. They were, they were murdered on earth. They're now with God in heaven. And you know what they're asking God in heaven? When are you going to avenge our murders? And uh, says, on them that dwell on the earth and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. When are you going to deal with the, uh, those who murdered us, God? Yeah. And um, I'm going to read verse 11. And white robes were given unto them, unto every one of them. Remember the white robes is uh, the purity of Jesus Christ. 
his sinless perfection, Christ who makes us acceptable unto God. And it was said unto them that they should do what, class? What does God tell them to do? He, said, he says, rest for a while, a little, pardon me, a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You know, the Heavenly Father says to these martyred saints, there's more of you coming. Just rest until the rest of the martyrs arrive. Okay? So we'll go back to chapter number 8 of Revelation, chapter number 8. And uh, look at this in verse number uh, five. And the angel took the censer. The censer is filled with the prayers of the martyred saints of the great tribulation and filled it with the fire of the altar and, and cast it into the earth. This is special delivery from heaven to earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. How many times from Genesis through Revelation do we read about God, the activity of God, the actions of God having a direct effect upon the weather, the climate of the earth. And this is no exception. Time and time again, you know, it's like, did you hear that thunder? Anybody hear the thunder? Anybody see the lightning? Yeah, you know, see, who controls, by the way, who controls the weather? Ultimately, God controls the weather. So if you got a complaint about the heat, but I don't recommend complaining to him, I would suggest you thank God if you've got any place to escape the heat. Be thankful for that. If you got any water to drink, amen? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you can go two different directions. I recommend thankfulness rather than complaining to God. That's my recommendation. In verse uh, number six, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now watch this. Um, the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire I'm sure we all understand hail. I'm sure we understand fire, lightning, bolts. Mingled with what, class? Isn't that interesting? Mingled with blood. Now that blood had to come from somewhere. And we just read in chapter six, the martyrs were at the altar of God who's on his throne and they're talking to God, how long until you avenge our, our what? Our blood. How long until you avenge our blood? They ask God. <laughs> that blood had to come from somewhere. Uh, do you remember the account? <clears throat> in uh, I got a couple of minutes, so look at this account in uh, Genesis chapter four. You got to see this, Genesis in chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and did the same thing that Antichrist did against these tribulation saints. He, he slew him, murdered him. Same, same action, same activity. In fact, you could say Cain is a forerunner of 
Antichrist. Now watch this. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Insolent. Smart aleck, rebellious. And he said, God now responds to uh, Cain. And he said, what hast thou done? Now watch this, please, in verse number 10. Look what God says. In fact, can you read it? Do you see it? The voice. What does a voice do? A voice communicates. A voice speaks. Isn't this interesting about blood? Guess who blood speaks to? Blood that is shed by murder, by martyrdom. Who does that blood speak to? Who hears that blood? Clearly, get your answer from the Bible. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto Unto who? God says to me. God says, I hear the blood speak that has been shed by murder from the ground. Now, we go back to Revelation. I must close. We go back to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 7. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth. Now, we're entering into the trumpet judgments. <clears throat> and all I'm going to do here is just read the verse, and then we're going to have to pick it up. If we're still here on earth, we'll pick it up where we left off. And they were cast <clears throat> upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was, all, mind you, all green grass was burnt up, And this is where I'm going to have to stop. But what I want you to meditate upon, if we're given another Sunday, what are the ramifications, what are the consequences, what is the effect of all the green grass upon the earth, and how many of the trees? A third of all the trees upon the earth being burnt up. How will that affect the planet? How will that affect the people on the planet? Will it have any effect? And what is God doing by burning all of this up? Well, well, I left you about 30 seconds. Father, Lord, uh, help us to be here, God, because we most assuredly, who know Jesus, we're going to be there, there in heaven, uh, observing all this. Wow. So help us not to miss any of it now. Prepare us in advance. And uh, God use us to reach lost souls. And now, I pray so that Hopefully they don't have to go through this if they'll repent and trust and believe in you now. Uh, please uh, help us in the service just ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.